welcome back to Pancakes and Chit Chat with me, Tegan. So this is our second episode, and I am so excited to be sharing another recipe with you guys and chit-chatting with you guys. So our first episode came out, and I had a fabulous time meeting new people in the comments and having great conversations. So I'm so glad that you guys are enjoying it so far, and I am speaking, praying, and believing that we will continue to enjoy on this journey together. So today, I am going to be baking one of my kids' favorite breads, which is going to be banana bread. And so, um, some years ago, when I first started out baking, my kids, when they were very little, used to love um, eating bananas. I would make them banana pancakes, all that kind of stuff to just help get more fruits and whatnot into their food when they were very tiny. And so, I finally learned how to make banana bread and a banana bread that they all enjoy, that the whole family enjoys. And so, for this recipe, um, I like to make it. <laughs> Sometimes I make it and freeze it, which is what I will actually be doing this time is making it and then storing it to be frozen. And then sometimes it's just go ahead and I put it in my little dish over there for them to enjoy for a couple of days to eat on. They eat it for breakfast as a snack, um, dessert, whatever time they love banana bread. And one of the things that I like to do with my banana bread as well is I like to give it a little cinnamon topping. So that's always a favorite. So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys the ingredients that we'll be using today and then we're going to start chatting. Okay? Hey guys, so first I'm going to go over some of the equipment you need. You're going to want to have an electric mixer, just handheld or whatever type that you have, to mix together your butter and sugar. And you are also going to need some type of blender. So whether it be what I have as a Nutri Ninja, I've had this for years, I use it for all types of blending and smoothing. Um, but if you have an actual blender, definitely use that. But my Nutri Ninja works perfectly. So you're going to need some type of blender and you're going to need an electric mixer. Then you are going to need some wet and dry ingredients. So you're gonna start off with your uh, wet ingredients. So you're gonna have sugar, you're gonna need about half a cup of sugar. Um, I am doing three quarter cup because I'm using extra flour because I actually want to make two loaves. So I have about three quarter cup sugar. You're going to need one stick of unsalted butter softened. So mine did melt a little bit more uh, because I had it sitting out near the stove as I had the stove preheating. So it melts a little bit more than what I wanted but it still works perfectly fine. Then you are going to need two eggs, and of course we're using our eggs from our girls that we have here. You're gonna need either two to three medium ripe bananas, or you can have four small ripe bananas. So when I say ripe, you want them to have brown. Now I have used super brown ones before, and it's even sweeter, but of course you know the browner, the skin of the peel of the banana, excuse me, um, the more ripe, and sweeter it's gonna be. So got your bananas there. And then here for your milk, you can do buttermilk or you can do regular milk. So in our household, we actually do um, like a lactose-free milk um, or I'll do buttermilk. So I have um, about, you, you, excuse me, you only need um, about half a cup of milk or half a cup of buttermilk. Um, again, since I want to make two loaves, um, I have about three quarter cup milk here. And then for your dry ingredients, you're going to need one teaspoon of salt, and then you're going to need one teaspoon of baking soda. For your flour, which you see here, you're going to use all-purpose flour. And your all-purpose flour, you're going to need about two cups of all-purpose flour. Again, since I want to make two loaves, I am going to do three cups of my all-purpose flour here. And again, here are my loaf pans. I have two um, nine inch loaf pans. And so I've got those here and you're gonna wanna make sure that either you butter them or spray them down or line them with parchment paper or something to make sure that your banana bread does not stick. And then you're also going to need an extra bowl for the mixing of your wet ingredients. So let's go ahead and get started. Hey y'all, okay, so I'm gonna get started with 
blending first. You're gonna need your electric mixer and you're gonna wanna go ahead and combine your some of your wet ingredients. You're gonna start with your sugar. So I'm gonna pour my sugar in and then I'm going to pour in my softened butter. So one thing that I would love for us to chat about today is what is one way you can start or continue um, implementing God into your daily life. And one of the first ways that I think is so helpful for your household is starting your day off with spending time with them. And so whatever time that is for you uh, is between, of course, you and God. But I have found that that is such a big game changer for my life and for the lives of my family is starting my day with God. And so that's getting up in the morning um, prior to everyone else prayerfully and going in and doing some praise and worship. Um, so listening to some praise and worship music, thanking God and going to him in prayer and meditating on his word to reading the Bible. And I have found when I start my day like that, my day goes so much better. Uh, that doesn't mean that there's not difficulty that happens throughout the day. That doesn't mean that, you know, <laughs> every moment is just amazing. That's not what that means. But starting my day off with God and, of course, continuing on my day with Him, but starting it off with Him really sets the tone for my entire household. So we're going to go ahead and mix on low speed. <laughs> Yo, one day I'm going to remember to make sure I plug it in first. My goodness. <laughs> okay, so mix on low speed. Did I not plug it in, Celia? Oh, goodness. I plugged in the blender. <laughs> Let's try this again, guys. Okay, low speed. So once that's blended, it should look, hopefully y'all can see it, it should look about like this. And then, so it won't be so loud, I'm going to go ahead and blend our bananas so we get all of our blending out the way and then we can keep chit-chatting. So you've got two bananas, you see how right they are, the this, this stem just came right off. <laughs> So I found that really starting my day with God sets the tone for my entire day. It sets the tone for my mood. It sets the tone for the household. And how I believe it does that is because I'm really inviting God in, in excuse me, to start my day. You know, I'm thanking Him and I'm praising Him for my life, the lives of my children, whatever it is that I'm thanking Him for. And then I just go into prayer with him and I ask him to lead me and to guide me um, throughout that day I don't even go I don't go steps into the future I don't start talking about tomorrow and all that stuff with them I really talk to him about just today um, the day that I'm in I don't go over yesterday none of that I'm talking to him about today and so I ask him you know to lead and guide me throughout my day and you know, continuing to be with me and then I, I meditate on his word and I read the Bible and I listen for him. But starting my day, praising God, thanking God, inviting him in to my life to start my day, um, I have found to set the entire tone. We're going to go ahead and blend our bananas. Maybe, y'all. Okay, hold on. I know I've got it plugged in. Maybe. Do I? I do. So, bananas are 
bananas are nice and blended. But that really, it really just, it, it sets my mood, it sets the tone um, of the day. It sets the tone and atmosphere of my household um, because I'm starting with honoring my father. I'm honoring and thanking and praising and just waking up with true, waking up and starting my day and allowing joy to fill my heart and to fill my home and being thankful and having gratitude. And, you know, when you invite joy and thankfulness into your heart and into your home, then you're allowing yourself and your household to have that positivity, to have, you know, a gracious mind and heart and spirit. And it really does change the entire mood of your house. And once I do that, I'm going to rinse this out real quick. So are, are you guys, I like to clean up as I go, clean up as I cook. Um, y'all do that? Do y'all like to clean up as you cook? I do. I do not like cooking in a messy kitchen. So I'm not going to wash that all the way, but I did rinse it out. Well, I'm just going to dry my hands off so I can continue. So we've got our mixture in and I am going to, let me see. I'm going to beat my eggs before I add them in. So these are my two eggs. Go ahead and mix those together. So I just feel like once I do that, I, I feel his presence. I feel him with me. Um, I feel like inviting him in to start my day just makes me feel so much gratitude for him and gratitude for my life. And guys, that does not mean that I don't have things going on. That does not mean that things are not difficult um, or that there are not storms or that stuff doesn't continue throughout the day. But choosing to start the day in gratitude, in praise and worship, in thankfulness to God and praying with him and reading his word really does do a heart posture, a heart check with you. And it really aligns you with how God wants us to be. And then in continuing that, uh, what I like to do is I start my children's day like that. Um, I go to them and now you can use your electric mixer for this or hand mix. So I start my children's day like that. Um, when I'm getting them up, I wake them up and we have um, something that I have them speak themselves and it's, you know, thanking God for waking them up and today is going to be a great day and we're going to rejoice and be glad in it, uh, which are all, you know, parts of verses from the Bible and, you know, because I want them to speak God's word into their life and over their life. And so that is something that also sets the mood for the day. And when they get up, I don't even usually now have to tell them, you know, to say it. They get up and they come to my room or they come to me and they say it or they say it in their own rooms um, as they're starting their day. And I absolutely love that. I love that they choose um, to say that, that they choose to put it in their day and they don't have a full understanding of what that is now, right? Um, but I want them to prayerfully have that as a part of their life where they start their day with gratitude to the one who gives them breath. To start their day knowing that this is another day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. To be thankful to our Father for filling our lungs and continuing to fill them with breath. And being thankful that we have another opportunity to spend the day with our Father, to spend the day doing His works, to spend the day enjoying the day that he gives us. So I want them to be 
thankful and grateful and to know who that thanks and gratefulness um, is beholden to, who it belongs to. And so having them start their day like that as well, again, it's another way to set the tone in our household. But it starts with me. Um, it starts with me because, you know, I'm the mom. <laughs> and we set the temperature of our household. Not that your husbands don't, because they do as well. But for the most part, for your household to help everyone start their day and continue their day on the path that we pray it should, it really starts with us as women. It starts with us choosing to say, I'm going to start my day with my Heavenly Father. I'm going to start my day with my Lord and Savior. I'm going to start my day with Holy Spirit guiding me and directing me and putting me on path on the path of righteousness for His name's sake. Like I'm going to start my day thanking and honoring and praising Him and praying and reading His Word. So, does that mean <laughs> that I get to do all of those things every single day, every morning? No. There are times where I may read my Bible a little bit later in the day, depending on you know how my day is flowing and what all. I have to do and making sure that I got up on time, all of those things. So um, I don't always get to do each of those steps every single morning. I definitely do them throughout the day, but I always make sure that I wake up and I begin by thanking him and praising him and honoring him and talking to him. Um, and I think that's really important. And then I make sure that my children implement the same. So now we're going to add in our baking soda. And we're going to add in our salt. So again, if you have um, like a stand mixer, um, you can do this all in your stand mixer. Again, I do everything by hand because this is what I have. Um, except, thank goodness, I've got my Nutri Ninja and I've got my handheld mixer. So I don't use my handheld mixer when I am mixing dry ingredients because the first time I ever did that, y'all, I just was like covered in flour. It was so crazy. I don't know why I thought that was a good idea, but I did and I did it and now I've learned that I don't do that anymore. But um, make sure that everything is mixed together evenly. So it takes quite a few stirs. Go ahead and get stir that together. I'm going to make a well. So a well is like a little hole basically that you put in the middle because you want to put in your wet ingredients. And I did forget to mention this, you're also gonna want um, a teaspoon of vanilla. So I'm gonna go grab my vanilla so that I can mix that in with the wet ingredients because I did forget to do that. So give me just a second while I go grab it. So I've added in about a teaspoon of vanilla and just some vanilla extract. My goal is to make my own extracts one day. Um, and one day I'll be able to. So I'm gonna go ahead and stir those together. But that's one of the main ways that I have started implementing God um, into my household and setting the tone for myself, for our home, for our children, all of that, because it really does change the atmosphere. I, I think there's a gospel song <laughs> that says something like that, like, um, he's entered the atmosphere or he's into the atmosphere, y'all tell me, I can't, something like that. But when you invite God in, um, he, he really does, he comes in and he, he will change up the entire environment into the household. And so now, like if I'm, reading my Bible throughout the day, um, which I do often. I, I'll go pick up my Bible and go look up something um, outside of like my study time. My children now will go get their Bibles because we bought them all Bibles um, in April and got me a new Bible. 
and it's actually the first Bible that I've ever like gotten for myself <laughs> and I've had Bibles right they were all gifted to me like I had one gifted to me for my older sister when she got married I still have that Bible um, one of my old um, general managers she gifted me a Bible I still have that I actually still use it too um, so this was like my first Bible purchase and so um, I have it I love using it um, I write in it highlight in it all that good stuff but the children now like when they see me reading they will go get their Bibles and come sit with me and read and y'all this was not overnight this has been purposeful it has been intentional of me changing how I choose to start my day, how I choose to um, let God into my life, in my day, and in my household, and my children seeing that and wanting to participate. And so, now, y'all, this does not mean <laughs> that I have, you know, some kind of perfect life or that I get it all right or that my household gets it all right or that everything runs smooth at all times. That's not what that means. But what it does mean is that prayerfully I am setting up what they choose to do later in life and what they choose to continue. You know, the Bible does say train up a child in which they should go so they, you know, don't leave it. And I'm paraphrasing, so definitely go read for yourself. But, um, so that is my goal. I, I want to raise children who are lights onto this world. And that light being the light of the Holy Spirit shining through them. And how can I do that if I'm never showing them God except for maybe on a Sunday when we go to church, you know? And I feel like to really, for me, for me to really show my children what it means to know God and what it means to have God and what it means to believe in Him and have a relationship with Him, for me, that meant they have to see me have a relationship with Him. They have to see me talking to God. Y'all, my children see me in here praising and worshiping and singing to God. They see me praying. They see me talking to God. Like, they see me um, sometimes worshiping and I'm full of tears and snot. <laughs> because, you know, I'm praising God. I'm worshiping Him. I'm talking to Him. Like, they see me. And I want them to see me. And they come in and they participate. And I love it, you know, because I want them to know him and I want them to know that his way is best. And for a time, I don't believe that I was showing that to them. And I didn't want them to grow up and continue on the path of saying, well, yeah, we, we go to church sometimes. But they don't really know who he is. And they don't see a true Christian walk being walked out in their home. And so that was really important to me. And again, for me, the first way to do that and show that, look how nice and fluffy this is. The first way to do that and show that was by me changing how I start my day and how I start their day. Um, so that's what I do. If you guys, you know, have things that you guys do um, that you have implemented into your home, I definitely say we have, you know, usually praise and worship music or gospel music playing in the house. I don't have it on right now because I think I would get like a copyright issue <laughs> having that playing during my video. But they will go, um, especially my girls, but my son does too. But my girls, they will go and talk to the Lexi device and have it play, you know, different gospel music that, gospel music, excuse me, that they've heard me play. And they request it and they sing and dance to it. Um, and my, my girls love to dance. And we used to, I used to let them listen to other types of music. And I'm not speaking against anyone who chooses to still do that. But... I was I felt very convicted the Holy Spirit convicted me on a number of things and so it, he was like if you want to invite me into the atmosphere of your home 
what is the atmosphere that you're setting? How are you inviting me in? And so it started with me and it ends with me, you know, as the mom, as the wife, as the teacher, as the baker, <laughs> like it's me including him. And so I definitely think that that's a great way to include him in starting your day with him and starting your kids' day with him. Excuse me one second. So I'm going to add in just a little bit more milk um, since I did more flour. So you don't want your mix to be like thin, um, but since I am making two loaves, I want to make sure that it's not, you know, too thick. So I'm going to move the balls out of the way. I think I had to finish mixing and get that going. So what is one way that you guys invite God, invite God um, into your household? Like, what's something you do? I hear a baby. I hear something to eat. Hey, it's not time yet. Aww. Yeah, okay, go back upstairs. I'll make a second. So that's one way I do. What is one way that you guys invite God um, into your household? I would love to hear in the comments, maybe something that you do um, that you can share with others and share with me because <laughs> we're all on this journey together. But I really love inviting God. I'm going to try and turn it so you can see how pretty it is when I pour um, it out. I wish y'all could smell this. It smells so good. So you can also add um, about a teaspoon of cinnamon into the mix. I have done that before. What I'm going to do today is actually make a cinnamon sugar topping, um, which you can definitely add cinnamon into the mixture. I've done that lots of times and it tastes and smells amazing. Um, and I actually make like a cinnamon muffin. Uh, which I'll share. Um, not today, but another time. I make a cinnamon muffin that everybody loves, um, and I make it um, for them. I make it for myself, gluten free, um, and it's delicious. So, you guys, this made a perfect two loaves. And it smells really, really good. But yeah, I I have found for myself that allowing God and to start my day in that way. Y'all see these two loaves. Starting my day with God in that way um, changes so much just for me, and it fills me with a lot of peace and joy and gratefulness. And so that sets the tone and how I interact with my children, how I interact with my husband, how I interact with other people. It sets the tone for how my children get up with having them get up with gratefulness. Um, and it just, it really changes the entire atmosphere of the household. It really does. So um, that's something that I definitely think would be great if you don't already do, to do, to start your day praising and worshiping God. Um, whether that's with you singing, you know, listening to gospel or praise and worship music and singing along and listening to what you're saying and letting those words, you know, take root in your heart of what it is that you're saying to him. Because, you know, when we're talking, we're not just talking to ourselves. Like he is listening to us and he is speaking back to us. So when you're singing, allow those words to take root in your heart and to absorb the meaning of what it is that you're singing and what it is that you're saying. And as you're praying, even in your prayers, starting your prayers out with thanks, thankfulness and gratefulness, you know, thanking him for that day, thanking him for, you know, another opportunity, thanking him for your children, your, your home, your husband, your whatever it is, <laughs> thanking him for that and continuing to thank him. And as you start thanking him, it's amazing how much your heart will start to grow and open to him and all of the different things that he 
shows you like, hey, this is me too. And you just will continue thanking him for all of those things and you will be filled with so much gratitude and so much love um, and so much joy and peace starting out with thanksgiving and gratefulness and giving him the first fruit of your day. And so once you give him the first fruit of your day, praise and worship, gospel, singing, and praying, you know, I think another great thing to do to add to that is reading the word. Now, it doesn't have to be, you know, chapters on chapters. Um, and oftentimes it won't be because when you're reading, um, well, when you start out, you might just be reading, right? Um, you may not be fully studying. When I'm doing it, I tend to be studying. And so it takes me a long time um, to get through even a chapter because I really study what's there. But you go through and you just read. Even if you're starting out with a verse or two. Um, now, we don't want to stay there, right? Because we want to continue to, to grow. We start off on milk and then we're going to continue to grow. So even if it's starting with a verse, start with that verse. You know, start there. If it's starting with, you know, praise and worship and, you know, a quick prayer to them, of thankfulness, of repentance, of, you know, asking him his thoughts on how he could use you for that day, what, however it is that you format that, you know, and starting your day there. And I think you will find how much more he's going to open your heart and how he fills you more with his joy and peace and how much thankfulness you will feel throughout the day and it will really set the tone for you for that day as you go off to work as you get the kids ready for school as you prepare the meal you know as you prepare for homeschool it will set the tone for your day and it will set the tone for your household it will change the atmosphere I guarantee you so even if you don't notice it that first day Keep being consistent in it and keep doing it and keep walking with him in it and you will see the shift. You will see the change. You will start to see the fruit. I promise. So I definitely think that that's like one of my highest recommendations. I'm going to go ahead and get these into the oven, guys. We're going to go ahead and get these in the oven. My oven is already on and preheated. So there's the first one. I gotta clean my oven, guys. And here is the second one. So the mixture, the way that I explained I was going to do it, makes two um, nine inch loaves. So those are in there and you fill them about halfway, a little bit over halfway full. You don't want it too full because then you will have overflow. So go ahead and close up the oven. It's already preheated. I have it preheated at 350. We are going to go ahead and set the timer and let it cook for, oops, set the timer. I'm going to initially set it for 50 minutes. Um, likely it will take a little over an hour, uh, but I want to be able to check it at 50 minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and let that cook. While that's cooking, I'm going to go ahead and wash some dishes so I have a clean kitchen when those come out. for just a few minutes so I can get ready to transfer it onto my baker's rack so that it can continue to cool. Let me see if it's cool enough for me just to pick up, but you see the loaves here. They're nice and golden. I'm just going to flip it over and take it out and put it there. The glass one is still pretty hot, let me see. Size loaves in this bowl. Make sure it's not too hot. 
In this bowl, we have some melted butter. And to this bowl, I'm gonna add in just a little bit of sugar. Okay, to this bowl, we're gonna add a little bit of sugar. So I have my sugar canister. And I have this little thing. I'm just gonna pour some sugar. And you're gonna need a whole lot because I'm going to use this as the topping. So like I was saying, you can put cinnamon in your banana bread. Some people do cinnamon, um, some people do like chocolate chips. I've done chocolate chips before, I've done um, like walnuts and stuff before. I have found that for my children, they do not like those additions. They just like the topping, they don't like breads with chunks in them, if that makes sense. So they don't like having, you know, banana bread with chocolate chips or anything else with chunks in them. So I don't make it that way. Um, I have, and I have um, for other people where you can put, you know, chocolate chips in your banana bread or you can do walnuts or something like that and it turns out perfectly. That's not what I do for our family because that's not their preference. So I do have this canister of cinnamon and I'm going to add some cinnamon. You don't need a whole lot. Just a few dashes will do. You pour the cinnamon in. I've got my trusty spoon. You see that's the cinnamon there on top. And I'm just going to stir this together. This smells so good. And so you end up with just cinnamon sugar, basically. So it's the cinnamon sugar topping that we put on, let see, that we put on the banana bread. So I have my little thing here. I'm going to dip that in the butter and I'm just going to brush that on. So the banana bread is still warm and I do want to do this while it's still warm because I want it to stick. Um, I want the topping to stick. and. It looks so good. It came out really well. You don't have to let yours get this brown. I let them do the full um, 50 minutes. And if you want to do 45 minutes and they not be as brown, you could do it. Excuse me, I actually did 55 minutes. So if you do 50 minutes, this it takes down some of the brownness. Um, but I just wanted it to brown a little bit more because my kids like their tops of their banana bread to be really crispy. So that's the butter and you just spread that over evenly and it just has a nice little sheen to it and it also helps your topping. This smells so, so good, you guys. So let me know if you guys baked along with me or not. I would love to know. And see, I'm just dipping some of the butter into the cinnamon sugar and brushing it on. And brush, brush, brush away. Now, I did not put like a little sheet or cloth or anything underneath this. And usually I do. I'll usually put like a plate um, or some type of pan or like a cookie sheet underneath so the droppings don't spill all over the counter. So that's a good thing to do to help you not have as much mess but that's okay. I've got to clean the counter again anyway. And I actually, I had cleaned the counter when I had finished mixing everything together and loaded everything into the oven uh, because I like to clean as I cook. It just, it makes the process so much easier for me, I have found. Um, the cleaning process, everything, this makes it easier. And I really like, I lather down <laughs> on the butter and cinnamon and sugar um, topping. And this makes such a delicious dessert. Like there are times where the kids and I will do um, like a learning tea time and we'll have like a little tea with a dessert that I make um, and like little snacks. So. 
this would be perfect for something like that for you and your kids or if you're doing something as like a women's um, retreat or something like this this would be like the perfect addition um, of course we're doing it more so for like breakfast or um, dessert because it is so yummy you guys see I do not miss a quarter like it's going to be louder <laughs> it's gonna be louder in there so this is our final product and it is my take on banana bread and it is a cinnamon sugar banana bread cinnamon cinnamon sugar topped uh, banana bread and it's really delicious the kids love it um, of course you don't have to do the cinnamon sugar topping if you want to cut down on some of the sugar um, you could just do like a little light brush of butter um, with a little sprinkle of cinnamon if you would like I like the cinnamon sugar topping um, it's a similar topping that I also do when I make um, cinnamon muffins as well and I'll do a cinnamon sugar um, topping I just won't use as much sugar and do more cinnamon um, but this worked out perfectly you see that this was with two medium-sized bananas we got two decent sized loaves um, out of it they rose really beautifully in the oven they are super beautiful and brown and just they look so yummy <laughs> they look like they are they are about to be absolutely delicious let me tell you so the kids are gonna love this hubby's gonna love it everyone's gonna need to enjoy it and so this is the recipe I hope you guys enjoyed it if you have suggestions on uh, another recipe that you would like to see me do um, definitely leave a comment if you have a favorite recipe that you like to bake and want to share leave that as well let me know your thoughts um, if you give this um, cinnamon top cinnamon sugar top banana bread a try um, I think that you and your family will enjoy it for sure and I would love to get your feedback on our topic today which is a way that you can one way there's many that we'll talk about but one way that you can implement God into your life and in your household and it really does change the entire atmosphere of your home when you put God in at the start of your day for you. And really that's kind of how God works. Before God works in some other external situation, he's going to begin his work in you. And so you want to invite him in because he's not going to force himself on you. So you want to invite God in to you. And you do that by starting starting your day, giving him the first fruits. And so the first fruits, really, of, of everything, but one of the first ways you can give him your first fruits is by giving him that praise and worship and prayer and inviting him into your heart at the beginning of the day. And when you do that, you will see a shift in your heart, you will see a shift in your mindset, you will see a shift in your whole household. And then continuing on to show your children to give God their first fruits as well. So to start their day off with gratitude and thankfulness and praise to God. And that will also help them um, in their walk in life and their walk with God. And so my children are smaller, they're eight, eight and about to be five. But I believe that this is something you can implement at whatever age your children are. Um, I don't think it's too early and I don't think it's too late. I've always read to my children um, since they were in my tummy, since they were in the womb. I've always read to them. Um, I've always played certain types of music for them. And it was a natural progression for me to have them start speaking the word of life over themselves and also natural progression for them to get their, their Bibles and then for them to see me walking those things out and wanting to partake with me. So I don't think it's ever too late. I don't think it's ever too early. It doesn't matter if you have teenagers um, or grown children. God can work in your life at whatever age, stage, or phase of life that you are in. So don't ever think that it's too late. Don't ever think um, that you should wait because tomorrow is not promised. Goodness, even the rest of the day is not promised. So. When God, when Holy Spirit convicts you and you feel that tug of Him wanting more um, of you and Him wanting to be in more of you and in more of your life, open your heart to Him and start with Him at the beginning of your day. Let Him in and let Him guide you throughout your day. 
and you will see the fruits of the Spirit, the fruits of the Holy Spirit start to show up in your life. And now some of you already have that, and that's such a blessing to continue and to be able to share with others. And so that's what I am doing. I am sharing as Holy Spirit leads me to share with other women at whatever age, stage, or phase they are in life, in whatever season. So I hope you guys enjoyed this today with pancakes and chit chat with Tegan. I have so enjoyed talking with you guys. Um, I am gonna freeze these for later. I might leave one out because <laughs> this one, um, I think I might leave this one out. So I might leave one out for them to have as a dessert and then just freeze the other. But you could definitely, um, Use some parchment paper, wrap it up, and then wrap it in some aluminum foil, and then put it in a freeze safe bag, um, or you can vacuum seal. But if you want to freeze it, or if you can, you know, put it in like a cake dish or something like that that I have over there, you can do that too to go ahead and um, enjoy. So a loaf, one loaf of banana bread for my family, for the most part, will last, you know, anywhere between three to five days, um, depending on how it's kept. But my kids, my husband, everybody loves banana bread. So usually in just a couple of days, it's gone. So I usually try to make between two to four loaves. Um, so I will likely make some more banana bread. Tomorrow, I'll probably make another four loaves <laughs> um, tomorrow to keep in the freezer for later. And then I'm also going to use, and I'll show y'all this, I have in this container, this is actually um, an already pre-mixed um, banana. So I had some bananas the other week and I didn't want them to go bad. So I actually took them and froze them and I'm on buying them now so I can make um, some more banana bread. And actually I think I will make banana muffins this time, which is basically the same recipe. So I'm going to make some banana muffins and then freeze those for later use as well. So I try not to let things go bad and and use everything so that we can enjoy it and it's not something that's a cost because it's something that we can use and enjoy. So I hope y'all enjoyed today. I really pray that this was a blessing to you guys and helped you on your journey and our walk together to grow closer to the Lord and our walk in betterment with Him in our lives. So y'all have a blessed day and I'll talk to y'all next time on Pancakes and Chit Chat with Tegan. Bye. We did it, Lord. Got another one.